Good morning, fellow privateers. Welcome to the week ahead outlook from your friends at Privateer of X. Not really anything out over the weekend that um, got my attention, at least. Um, let's see if I can move this thing. Hold on. Oh, well. um, let's just start out with the charts. Um, Here's the U.S. 10-year yield that we were playing for higher yields a couple weeks back. We broke this downtrend line, got up to a high of 197, and it's quickly reversed. So we're looking at weekly charts here as it's you know the start of the week. Um, we're back below this trend line. Um, it did bounce and close kind of mid-range for the week, but um, you know as long as we're back. Kind of below here, below this line, I think maybe you can get a further uh, move lower in, in, in rates, and the 30-year uh, is going to look pretty similar. You know, we had two pretty pretty dark candles, so we've you know we've basically retraced this whole real big up week that we saw the first week of November, and uh, it's given all back. You know, those yields have given back all there their gains. So, you know, maybe, uh, you know, a little bit more of a retrace, maybe somewhere down here in the 30 year back down to 210. Um, you know, I was looking at all these charts earlier and it just a kind of a boring, boring looking weeks all, all together. I mean, here's gold. Um, I got some old lines in here, but, you know, gold reversal lower. That Some of that was just dollar strength that we saw. Get to that the dollar charts in a minute, um, you know, but not nothing really exciting. You know, we had a reversal week higher this week after the big big down move, and a reversal lower week. So, you know, volatility, and we're approaching Thanksgiving here in the U.S., which you know this week is kind of a wash. There's a lot of there'll be a lot of market participants that will not even be at their desk this week. Um, we privateer types will be paying attention uh, definitely Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, Thanksgiving day on Thursday, not so much. And then uh, Friday, you know, kind of a half day Friday. So something to keep in mind in, in all the years that I've been on the market, um, some of the most outsized moves I've seen have actually been <laughs> the week of Thanksgiving. Um, maybe I'll put out a separate little, you know, video highlighting some, uh, some of the moves that we've seen over the, over the Thanksgiving week, um, you know, over the past 10 or 15 years, uh, you can definitely get some outsized moves. So here's silver, you know, nothing much, um, tried to rally early part of the week and then I think just faded with some dollar some dollar strength. Um, platinum is going to be, you know, the same type of thing. It had a pretty big rally actually after that huge down week two weeks ago. And uh, <clears throat> but then kind of faded and you know just kind of back in the range and nothing too exciting. Copper, you know, kind of a risk on barometer, just not doing much at all. Um, this thing's died to death. We have been playing copper from the long side, and I don't know, these trend, trend lines aren't even that great, but you know, here's something, some sort of kind of a dumbbell line, nothing great, but um, you know, it's holding. Although I'm worried if we start taking out this 261 level, uh, which would be three weekly lows now, if we get below there, then. You know, maybe it maybe it'd be following some of the equities sell. You know, maybe equities would be selling off, or there be to be some sort of a risk off type theme. Um, but that's one to watch for sure. S and P here is the this is the CFT. So this is the S and P 500 cash index kind of equivalent. Um, doji type week. Uh, if we look at the daily real quick, we actually had 
you know, kind of two red bars off the all-time high. Uh, that was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday we, we closed back up strong. This chart pattern is actually inter interesting, this three-day chart pattern. We had the, the, the sell-off, you know, I think that was something on the back of China trade deal, maybe not going according to plan, maybe not happening in 2019. But the buyers took over and came right back in. We had that doji day, and then we closed up near the highs on Friday. So until we can kind of get under 3090, um, you know, I think you're supposed to be playing for the long side. Um, here's a NASDAQ daily same type of thing we had a doji a couple down bars and back up on friday take a look at the weekly a little bit of a reversal lower week but you know nothing that's really got me interested in being short um, our base case is that you we, we will still see some sort of correction um, going back to the s p's of you know, I, I do think that we can get down to kind of, you know, maybe these old highs, this 30, 30 area, um, maybe down to this uptrend line, just 30, 15. And, and then we think it's just going to rally. And I can see this market closing out of the dead balls highs, you know, at the end of December, um, you know, and then starting in January, maybe, maybe start seeing some more two way. Because it's really just, this is just FOMO and, and TINA and whatever other acronym you want to use. VIX, we've been playing this from the long side. It was looking decent. Um, we got up to about 14 this week. Took out those previous week's highs and then closed pretty much unchanged. And um, we've, we've got some protection on just in case. And if, you know, if we do get a 3 three to 5% correction here before your end um you know these they will be be talking vix at you know 18 or 20 and not not down here at 12 30. currencies the i saw some chart the other day i think it was a they're showing a chart of six month euro currency fall um believe it made a new all-time low last week i don't have a those charts here, but um, you know, if you're if you've been trying to capture pips in the currency market, good luck because you know vols have been completely smashed, and you know you look at some of these kind of expected moves in any given day, and you know we're talking 15 to 20 pips, which kind of hard to make money in that market, so we're staying out of it. Cable, uh, reversal lower week, nothing really, you know, it's at this, this 130 area is proving good resistance for now. And it's getting, you know, it's kind of wound up. I mean, it's one, two, three, four, five weeks between 127.70 and 130.15. Um, you know, we have the election coming up in December, so there, there's a chance that uh, this continues sideways and, you know, you know it'll just be headline driven. Euro uh, back below the trend line. Uh, we got all excited about thinking there'd be dollar weakness and euro strength right back below the trend line. Reversal lower week. You know, maybe going back to the lows. Not that interested in the euro. Dollar CAD had a good week. Um, I think that. Uh, let's, let's get rid of some of this stuff. But, you know, having said that, this has just been in a multi-month, pretty tight range between 130 and 133.85. It's been the high, and I don't really see any reason for this to break out. Your side, Aussie dollar, uh, you know, third red candle weekly since you know lower lows the past couple weeks. Did not quite take out the previous week's low, but. You know, another low close and you know we're, we're approaching the lowest the lowest weekly close of this whole move and Aussie is 67.36 we closed on Friday at 67.80 so um, this is one that I've been thinking we'd be you know somewhere around 60 cents by year end 
and you know there's a bunch of different things that could get us down another you know maybe not maybe not 60 cents because we only got about five or six weeks left in the trading year but um, I could definitely see this retesting the lows made back in uh, where we kind of have this double bottom down at 67 66.70 uh, oil, I'm not going to talk about it. I think it's a waste of time. i got a couple of these other ones, not gas. It's not, <clears throat> it's not of interest to most. Um, why don't we just take a look at the whole chart here real quick. Did have a big bounce, big tail, kind of an outside reversal, higher bullish engulfing type week. Um, really have no idea what's going on there. Trend line. There's a Dumbo, maybe a two-pointer, and yeah, nothing great, but you can see this. And then you got this uptrend line here, off that low. It's not a great triangle, but you get you get the picture. I mean, pretty much like a 50 to 60 type trading range. It's done a lot of work here for several months, and uh, next. Next move, I have no idea. Could go either either direction. Um, let's look at a couple of currency crosses. You know, last week we were thinking that we were seeing signs of risk off, and they were appearing in uh, in things like Aussie yen and um, you know some of the other yen crosses, and. You know, equities were feeling like maybe they were going to roll over. Maybe we break down through 3090 in the S&P, and you'd have a pullback, you know, 50 handle pullback. We just didn't get it. Um, there's just no life at all to this market. But this is a this looks like an important line. So I put this on your radar for this week at 73.35. Um, we've got a couple daily lows down here. That was that spike low right there, and. There is a trend line. Again, this one, I'm going back, to, this is a daily now. Uh, you know, something like that. It's not bad. I mean, it's a multi month line. It goes back to August. And, you know, so we're watching this, but we, we, we were seeing some of this in Sterling Yen, and or that was Aussie, but this one's Sterling Yen. I mean, take a look here. This is one that we played. We tried playing the break through 139.60 and then 139.40. And, you know, we closed right on the lows of the week. And this has been very, very stable sideways, you know, from this 139, call it like one, call it right somewhere around 139. And then you got a couple highs here at 141.60. Um, this one looks like it could it could move, and it had a parabolic rise, right? You know, mainly on the uh, sterling strength. I really didn't. I wouldn't say this was a Japanese weakness move. This is more of a British pound strength. But um, this is going to make this is going to decide soon because it's wound up very very tight. You know, just overall, we're still leaning toward a small risk off move. And then see equities close the years on the highs. That is what I'm, how I'm kind of positioned as of right now. You know, would be looking to buy a dip in risk if we saw it, but uh, the market's extremely complacent. As you can see, it's confused. Sterling has a good example of just kind of a sideways range, and it'll be a trade headline that would will drive it. Either lower or higher. Um, or also, our base case is that there is some sort of skinny trade deal with China, so um, we're in a rollback of some of the tariffs. So we still think that outcome be, could be positive, but it might be, it, it could also be a, a sell effect. So they've been buying, you know, the rumor of a trade deal, a phase one skinny deal. And I could see this, the market looking at the deal, saying this isn't enough. 
this has no impact on phase two. Phase two, we don't think is ever going to happen. You know, we think we're on the cusp of a, a cold war with China. This is going to be a multi, multi-year, uh, uh, multi-year, you know, trade battle, trade war, and and this phase one really just doesn't do anything other than maybe give Trump a little bump in the in the in the polls going into 2020, but uh, we don't think it goes any further than that. So. Um, you know, if we do get a trade, a positive trade headline saying that they they have agreed on a a deal, look at the details very closely because I think they'll be disappointing, and I think the market will just hit a bid because you know, as you can see, since the beginning of October 28.55, this is kind of a parabolic looking chart, and you've seen this in all the equity complexes, a lot of individual stocks, and uh, you know, the complacency is very high. Uh, I believe I saw the commitment of traders. The VIX shorts are new, making new all, uh, a new all-time high number of VIX shorts. That scares me a little bit. Um, so, you know, bottom line, it is a holiday shortened week. There have been some epic moves during the week of Thanksgiving. There's been several times where I'm, you know, in between courses and find myself trading Kiwi Yen or Aussie Yen in Asia, or, you know, in between my Thanksgiving dinner. So um, pay attention this week because you just never know. Um, What's the one more chart I want to look at for? Take a look at your, your Aussie. What's that telling us? Eh, nothing. Just a reversal day, Friday. The weekly. Yeah, there's nothing there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at that. You'll hear from us on the European Open. Um, like I said earlier, we will be in front of the screens uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, if something dramatic is happening in the markets, we will comment or shoot some videos or at the very least put out some uh, some tweets just to keep everyone on top of uh, any new developments. But um, in the meantime, have a great, uh, great week ahead and you'll be hearing from us tomorrow morning. All the best. Cheers.